Uh, today I'm going to talk about Mojalicious, um, not the full framework of Mojalicious, but the toolkit that um, enables the framework. Uh, Mojalicious is, is a web framework like Ruby on Rails or Node uh, Express. Um, and the supporting the web framework is a collection of utility classes that, that we call the Mojalicious toolkit. Um, this presentation is about the toolkit, not, not the framework. So I, I won't be showing a lot about how to build web applications in, in this go-round, um, but it's something we can cover in the future if, um, if it's interesting to you. The um, history of Mojalicious, Mojalicious started in 2008. It's 10 years old. Happy birthday. Sebastian Rydell is the uh, primary author of Mojalicious, and um, he, <clears throat> he also wrote the uh, Catalyst project, if you're familiar with that. He, he was the primary driver of Catalyst. And um, eventually, uh, there were some philosophical differences uh, about uh, where that project should go. So he withdrew from that project and, and started Mojalicious in 2008. Um, Mojalicious is optimized for user friendliness and development speed, uh, rather than reuse of uh, CPAN components. Uh, this is, I won't, I won't discuss a lot of frame, web frameworks. Um, a lot of people think that the size of a framework is a cost that you only pay once during installation and setup, and therefore it's not really relevant to web development. Um, and, and that may be, depending on how we, your development style, that may be. Um, I would argue that it's an ongoing cost, especially when you're experimenting, and um, you actually don't pay that cost when it's too high, and so you stop experimenting. Uh, I do this all the time when I'm, I'll create a new directory, install Mojalicious to, just to try out an idea. And um, you can do it in under 30 seconds. And, um, and this way you can afford to do lots of experiments because it's so fast. Uh, Catalyst uh, weighs in at about 15 megabytes. It uses 102 CPAN distributions. And uh, on my laptop I can install it. This is a 2014 laptop, it's not new, but uh, in, in under three minutes. Dancer, another popular Perl framework, uh, is... Uh, about almost a third that size, and it un installs in under a minute, 36 CPAN distributions, 38. Modulicious is about two, two and a quarter megabytes, and installs in three seconds on my laptop. So I want you to keep that number in mind, that two megabyte number. So the code for this presentation is available right now on GitHub at this URL. Most of the exam, well, a little over half of the examples that I'll go through, I borrowed from the documentation itself. I'm, I'm gonna just make a quick pass through the Mojalicious toolkit, all of the little tools and components and utilities that come with Mojalicious, but not the framework itself very much. So uh, we're gonna start with um, Mojo Date. So Mojo Date is a date parser. Uh, it parses most of the common date formats that you find on the web. It's not a universal date parser. It's definitely skewed toward web uses of date formats. So you'll see here uh, uh, an epoch date, um, a, a standard Apache, RFC 822 date, um, RFC 850 date, and CC dates that you get when you do a date on your command line. Um, RFC 3339 is also known as ISO 8601, I believe. Um, that's the, the date time stamp that, you know, with the T in the middle. That it's, it's easy to parse because it's all well, well defined. And, and Mojo Date parses all of those dates nicely. <clears throat> it has one, um, it has one way to print a date, pretty much, and that's to date time, and that returns an RFC 3339 style date. And uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run this little program right here. Um, it doesn't do a lot, as you would expect. Um, is that big enough? Do I need to make that bigger? Is that okay? You can see that from the back. Okay. Uh, so let's make sure I'm running the same program that you saw on the screen. It looks like I am, so I'm just exam. And there's all the epoch dates that it parsed, and then finally the uh, 8601 ISO date at the end. Uh, one interesting thing about this Mojo date, remember how big was the entire Mojolicious installation? Do you remember? A little over two megs. The date time module itself is 29 megabytes. Um, now, this doesn't do all the things that date time does, but if you just need to parse web format dates, um, you could install all of Mojalicious just for its date parser and, and still come out ahead. It's, it's kind of interesting. All right, we're going to move on to Mojo Log. 
Uh, module log is a simple logger that just keeps getting better. Um, it logs by default to standard error, so that makes it great for containers or foreground daemons. Um, Mojo, so in this, in this um, example, we create a log object. Let me, let me drop down into the um, command line here. We're going to create a, um, a new log object here. You can initialize your log with a path. We'll call it mylog.log. And you can set a default log level. So this is our log object here. I'm going to skip this format for just a moment. We're going to create this log object. Then we're going to immediately change its log level to debug so that when we actually say a de give a debug message, this will appear. Um, uh, here's an info level. Now, what's interesting about this is you can pass multiple messages, and they're each logged as a separate line. Um, it also logs uh, UTF-8 nicely. Um, then we're going to bump the log level up to warn. And we're going to emit a warn message. Uh, debug you will not see this message because our log level is now set to warn, uh, error, and fatal. This new section right up here, format, was added to Mojolicious kind of recently. Um, it allows, for a long time, log, Mojo log wasn't very interesting. And suddenly, it's a little bit more interesting because you can now change the format of your logs into something that's more useful for you. What I've done here, it's, it's, it's very terse. I apologize for that. Um, typically, let, let me comment this out and show you what usually happens in, in log files when we log a multi-line. Um, OK, so here, um, here is our log. We've logged a debug message. And here's a multi-line log message spread across several lines. And you, you notice here, um, we don't. If we're, for example, if we were picking out, uh, trying to grep through some logs looking for a particular date, we'd get this line, but none of the lines below it. We'd skip those in our grep. And we wouldn't know, you know, we wouldn't be able to find what we're looking for. And that happens all the time. So what I've got here in this formatter, I'm going to take that, those comments back out. We, um, the format subroutine callback here receives from Mojalicious the time, the, log, the current log level, and any lines that might be there. Um, I am taking those lines, and <clears throat> I am uh, running them through a, um, the, the first line does not get a plus, but all subsequent lines get a plus in front of them to indicate that these are continuations from the previous log message. And I'm going to add a, uh, I'm going to set, uh, use the, change the log formatting date to use the, a, a date time format here, ISO. So now if I run this, and we look at my log. So here was our first run up through here. And you can see the date format in there. This is a nice log message. But now we have a nice ISO date. And we see that those lines are now tied together with a, with a, a, a date that they all share now. So that makes gripping through logs nice. And, and that's, it, we can do that now because of this new formatting callback that, that the log provides. Any questions on these? OK, Mojo Collection. Mojo Collection is a little class that presents an object-oriented interface to a lot of list operations you find scattered throughout CPAN. And um, in this particular example, let me just um, drop into we create a, a collection of a bunch of numbers as English words. And that we put those into this little collection object here, $C. Some of the methods that you have in the collection are grep. Uh, now, you could do all these things using standard Perl list operations. It's just nice to have them as a collection that you can pass around uh, without uh, uh, keeping, keep, keeping some context with it. Uh, we're going to grep all of the pieces of that collection that have the letter T in it. And of those, we're going to pass that to UC first, which uppercases the first letter of the word. We're then going to shuffle um, those uh, words. So this does a randomization of, of shuffling the, the, uh, the elements of the array that's left. And for each of those, we are going to just print it out with the word word in front of it, exam. So not a lot there. You can see if we run it a few times, it, gets, it keeps getting shuffled. Uh, that's a, that's Mojo Collection right there.
here's Mojo URL. Mojo URL is a URL parser. Um, it implements a subset of RFC 3986, 3987, and the URL living standard for uniform resource locators with support for international domains. Um, so it, it's, it's fancy. It has a, you can, its constructor takes a URL string and it immediately explodes it into components. So there's the scheme, the user info, if there is some, the host port, if there is one path, if there is one query string, if there is one, and the URL fragment that you would uh, use in like a single page app or something like that. So we'll quickly uh, run that. Nothing, nothing really fancy there. Mojo file. Uh, this is a fairly new module added to the toolkit. It uh, wraps a few commonly used core file modules in CPAN, including file base name, file copy, file find, file path, file spec functions, file temp, and IO file, and gives it a nice cohesive um, uh, object-oriented interface. Uh, in this uh, particular case, let me, um, let me just get into it. We uh, create a new uh, file object here and call it dollar path and uh, we're going to uh, we, we give it as its constructor a file name now I have let me I have a server.conf right here and it's just a little any format file and I also have a directory called lib and uh, there are 10 files located under that so if we go back into here this chunk right here is going to uh, take a uh, open up this file well it's not going to open up the file it's just going to you know set some internal uh, state on the path object here. Now we can pick that thing out. It's going to get the directory name, which is going to be dot, because we're in the current directory. Uh, base name is going to match server conf. Slurp is a nice uh, convenient method for opening a file, reading it into a variable, and returning the contents of that variable to you as a string. So it's like a uh, backtick cat, basically, file name, but much safer and, and uh, very quick and without the fork. Uh, that's that part. Um, this second part down here, we uh, create, uh, we invoke the constructor on the um, lib directory that I showed you earlier, uh, and then invoke a list method on this. Now list returns a mojo collection of the contents of that directory. And then for each of those, so each is a mojo collection function or method. And for each of those, I'm just going to say what's in it. So if we run this, there. The first uh, part of our thing is catting out, here's directory and base name, and we cat out the contents of that file, and then we're iterating over each of the components of that, of that list here. Questions? Mm -hmm. it, it is pretty slick. Mojo DOM is an amazing XML and HTML parser. You can use CSS selectors to find the bits of the document you want. And um, so in this case, we're going to use a Mojo file object and slurp in argv, which is the first uh, thing on the command line. Uh, we're going to create a file object from that, a bare one, and then immediately invoke slurp on it. And we're going to return the contents of slurp, which is this, the actual contents of this file. We're going to pass it an, uh, an HTML file. So $HTML holds the contents of the HTML file. Uh, we're then going to, from that string of HTML, uh, pass that to Mojo DOM, which parses it and creates a DOM object. At that point, we are able to invoke the at method of the DOM, which uses CSS selectors, the same kinds of selectors you might use in a CSS file. And uh, look for, we're going to pick out an ID, or an element whose ID is hosting plans and who has a child of H1. And we're going to print out the text from that. And then we're going to uh, use the DOM find method, which uh, returns a Mojo collection. And uh, we're going to look for the, uh, a UL element that is, has a class of first-ul, and we're going to pick out all of its li, its, its children, list, list elements. And we're going to pass each of those to each, and, and then we're just going to print out all the text we can find here that, that comes out of that. So let me, um, 07. Uh, here is my index file. This is the uh, HostGator homepage. I downloaded earlier, and then I, I kind of cleaned it up because it was um, uh, a quarter of a megabyte, quite quite large, and it's, it's a little bit smaller now. So uh, here's our same file here that we were looking at a moment ago. So if I hit this, oh, 
Oh, I've got to pass it a, a file name. There we go. OK, so powerful web hosting, that's, um, that's the, um, this thing right here. That's the text of the hosting plans H1. And then each of the elements are, um, this is a list that was in that HTML page. So it's great for screen scraping. Questions? There's also a JSON parser built in. Um, it parses JSON into Perl data structures and vice versa. Um, it also has a Mojo JSON pointer uh, syntax you can see here, which implements RFC 6901 JSON pointer syntax. Um, I'll mention later, if you use some of the other components of Mojolicious, including Mojo user agent, you get this pointer syntax transparently as a, as a delegate in the, in the user agent object. Here we're going to, again, create a Mojo file object, immediately slurp that into a $JSON variable. So $JSON now contains the contents of a JSON file that we would pass in on the command line. We then use the decode JSON method or function from Mojo JSON. And now we have a Perl data structure that's been parsed. At that point, we, have, uh, we can take that data structure and pass it to Mojo JSON pointer. Uh, which gives us a JSON pointer object. We can use the JSON pointer syntax. This is um, really handy when you're trying to find, uh, uh, pick out a single component from a JSON object. Um, uh, uh, being able to use this kind of a syntax, the, the one refers to the first, not the zeroth, but the first element of an array uh, under add-ons here. Let's, uh, let's see if I can uh, JSON PP. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Oh, wait. Okay, JSON PP test. So here we have this JSON object. Here's the add ons. This, the, there isn't, it's not important what the contents are, but you know that it's a list. So that's the first element of that list. Here's the second element down here. And I think we were going to pick out rates and then find the British pounds. It's, I think, and pick out the price. Let's um, make sure that's true. Yes, add ons, rates, GBP, price. So if I run this and I pass in the hmm. JSON, boom, just parses that, picks out the price. Very nice. Um, I'm going to run a little benchmark here. Um, I'm going to compare, uh, Mojo JSON is, I think, the fastest pure Perl JSON parser. Um, so let me just run this here. It's going to benchmark this. It should take around 10 seconds or so. I'm going to compare this with cPanel JSON XS, which is, I think, the fastest XS based Perl JSON parser. We'll see how this does. We'll look at this here. You can see that the XS parser is almost. 20 times faster than the pure Perl. And that's true, it's always going to win. So uh, this is great for little documents. It's integrated with Mojalicious. If you're just parsing fragments and things and nobody's waiting for you to you know, parse tons of JSON, use it, because it's incredible. Especially but, if it's the JSON you control when you're in the Yes, yeah. yeah. But if you, are, if you are getting external documents or unfamiliar or not sure and you need it to go fast, absolutely use the XS version. Yeah. And, and, and with that encoding, I. That's, that's something that's a gotcha that you only find by failing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mojo user agent. This is where things start to get fun. Uh, Mojo user agent is simple uh, to set up and use. Here's how to fetch a web page and print it out. This works just like LWP or HTTP tiny. So we'll quickly. Oh, nine. So we'll just run that. Oh, okay, that was HostGator's web page. Let me just, there. So got the, got the whole web page, very nice. Nothing really fancy here. We uh, create a new user agent object, invoke its get method. That returns a um, transaction object that has a result component that we then can pick out the body. That method chaining, by the way, is kind of throws at a lot of people, but it's something you see all over in Mojalicious. Um, one object returns another kind of object that you can then chain its methods. It uh, makes for very readable, um, uh, you know, for some definition of readable. It makes it concise, and if you're familiar with it, it becomes like, oh, natural. This is like, I don't know why you would do it any other way. It's great. Uh, here's, it, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, um, 
you get a JSON parser built into Mojo user agent, which is something we'd have to do in several steps if we were using LWP or HTTP Tiny or any other user agent for that matter. Uh, so we get the JSON pointer syntax, which we'll look at more closely in a, in a moment. Here we uh, create a user agent object. We're going to set a dollar URL to um, uh, Twilio. We're going to do a post to it, pick out the result, and now JSON, we're going to use the JSON pointer to pick out slash message from that, um, from that response. Let me show you what that response normally looks like. Here's a curl call, so I'm going to do curl. And we get a JSON object back that has a code, a detail, and a message. And this is what we want to pick out. And so our example, of course, will do that for us if I say, boom, and there it is right there. Authentication error, no credentials if provided. So a built-in JSON parser with JSON pointer syntax. Very handy. Oh, yes. Can we override the uh, JSON parser use the engine Internally. Not yet. That has been something people have asked about for a long, long time. The, the depth of integration is pretty deep. I think it'll eventually happen. I hope it eventually happens because JSON access is hard to ignore, just the speed differential. And if you're, if you're working a lot with JSON APIs, it's, it's, it's a big deal, especially if you're serializing big data structures and yeah, things like that. Deep. It becomes more and more critical. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, I did it in a project, but it was very invasive. Um, I'm hoping that at some point it will be like natural. If, if JSON access exists, just use that parser instead of the built-in mm -hmm. one. Um, not there yet, but it, maybe someday. Uh, Mojo user agent also has a DOM, the DOM parser built into it. So you get Mojo DOM. Uh, uh, Mojolicious tends to dog food all of its modules everywhere. And so here we are scraping a Wonderground weather web page to fetch the current temperature for a location. I will go through the syntax briefly. Uh, we're going to create a new Mojo user agent on the line above this. We're going to pick out the result and put it in a result variable. Now, th this, this contains the result variable has things like headers, body, stuff like that. Um, the next thing we do is we're going to invoke the DOM object uh, method, which returns a DOM object that we can then use at, which is part of the DOM syntax, and uh, use the CSS selector to pick out the uh, the city name, and uh, we're going to put that into $LOC, and now we're going to pick out a different uh, thing, uh, a component, the, the current temperature at, at a different location, CSS selector, and put that in $Temp, and finally print that out to the screen using a, a fancy printf uh, format. Let's run this. Okay, make sure that's the same one. It is. Okay, let's time this. That took, um, mm, that's fast. Uh, you know, if we run it a couple times, probably three quarters of a second. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just say three quarters of a second on average. So remember that. Uh, Mojo, uh, the most, I think one of the most important advantages of Mojo user agent over other user agents is its ability to make non-blocking requests. So here, we use get p instead of get on the user agent. That returns a promise, an A plus promise. That's the same as you would find in JavaScript. Um, this works just like it does in JavaScript. In fact, it implements the same interface. So what we do here is in, in, dollar, in at URLs, I might have 30 weather URLs. And I invoke get p on each of those and, and shove those into this at promises array. Um, those have not come back yet. These are just promises that something will come back at some point. So I fire them all off asynchronously, non-blocking. The next thing I do is um, wait for all of the profit promises to resolve using the all class method of Mojo Promise. So uh, at this point, we're going to wait and, and for things to come back. Um, the then fires its callback once those have all resolved. And um, the callback is this here. There's a subroutine in there. And we're going to pass all of those resolved promises here. Each of them uh, is, is uh, mapped to the $TX variable. Um, actually, all is a little different uh, because it returns a tuple. Uh, it returns the, um, I think it, re I can't remember what the second object is there, but the first one is the transaction. That's the one we really want. Maybe it's the user agent. I, think, I don't remember. Um, 
And finally, we iterate over all of those things. And this is more or less the same text that we had in the previous example. We're going to pick out the location, the temperature, and print it out in a fancy, uh, a fancy little print. This little weight right here, uh, you would not use in a modulicious application because you are already inside of an event loop. If you are doing a standalone pro program like this, you need to start an event loop, and that's what weight does for you. So let's look at this. 12. So uh, I will uh, load this up for you to see. I have loaded this with 30 URLs, Wonderground URLs, and then otherwise it's the same as what we saw on the slide. I'm going to time this and hope that it performs a little better than it did when I was uh, testing it earlier. All right, four seconds to hit all 30 URLs. Now, you remember, it took us 3 quarters of a second just to hit one. 3 quarters, I'm not a mathematician, 0.75 times 30, if we did those serially, would take us 22 and a half seconds. Is your list on the GitHub, the list you used? Uh, yes, the question oh, okay. is, is the list I'm using on, the, on GitHub, it is this, I checked in this oh, exact okay. mo uh, module. Whoa, Death Valley's already 108, that's pretty warm. Um, anyway, that's what you get in, um, in non-blocking, that's why non-blocking, especially uh, network I.O., is so critical, is, is you just don't waste time waiting for stuff. This will return as fast as the slowest request. All right, that's Mojo Promise. Very, very nice stuff. Okay, so Mojo, Mojo, Mojo user agent is a non-blocking user agent. Um, Mojolicious, if you remember, um, the entire distribution is about the size of, whoops, of LWP by itself. Just, just a little bit bigger than LWP. So if you just want a user agent and you're about to install LWP, don't install Mojolicious user agent instead. Because it, it has a blocking interface that works exactly like it. Um, but you also get the JSON parser, the DOM parser, the non-blocking stuff, I and mean, you get a ton um, for for uh, for the price of, of LWP. Uh, now, if we added LWP or uh, the JSON parser and, and the DOM parser and non-blocking I/O, of course, the it, it wouldn't compare at all. We'd be we'd be several orders of uh, maybe an order of magnitude larger than than just uh, the Mojolicious by itself. All right, Mojo template. Uh, Mojolicious's templating system is uh, small, fast, but uh, still fairly powerful. The Mojolicious framework isn't uh, tied to it. It's integrated with it, but not tied to it. So if you wanted to use, it uses a plugin architecture, so you absolutely can use Template Toolkit or any other templating uh, framework that you like. Um, it does, this does make it easy for 90% uh, of cases I have seen that use templates, this implements all of it. Uh, it's, you know, typically variable substitution, looping over things, interpolation, that's all there. Very nice stuff. Um, in fact, you can change, well, uh, let me just advance through this. Here we're going to create a Mojo template object. And in day-to-day -day use, I'll say if you're using the Mojolicious framework, a web framework, to create a web app, you wouldn't do any of this stuff that I'm showing you today because it's built in and integrated, usually as some kind of a delegate method or something like that. You wouldn't create a template object, it's just there's already a method that would be in your, you know, to, to render that would give you the template already. Uh, we create a new template object here. We're going to pass it a, a string, a here document, that looks like a chunk of HTML. Inside of that, um, we, uh, 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 so we've created that string. Now we pass that string to a render method here. We also pass in a uh, curly braces title, hello world. What that does is it sets title up in the here document here uh, to the value of hello world. Now that, that's possible through the use of vars1 that says, yeah, create any variables that you see that I'm passing as, you know, in scope of, of the template. And then we're going to loop from one to five. Um, the syntax here that you see in this right here, the, the, per, the angle bracket percent, um, that's, you can change that. If you don't like that, if you want to use curly braces, double curly braces, or any other, whatever, if you've already got templates that work for you, you can change the modulus syntax to use those templates. It's pretty neat stuff. Uh, and then a percent sign just escapes. Uh, it says Perl code is coming. And, um, and so we are escaping 4, 1 to 5. Uh, on the next line, it's going to actually print that um, and then with the interpolation there of a dollar underscore. And then we're going to escape the, the final curly brace there so that the HTML doesn't see it. Okay.
So let's um, 13. We'll run this. Not very fancy, but it got the job done here. Nice, clean HTML. Um, I'm not going to do this example, but I'll just show this on the screen. Uh, Mojalicious uh, has a little library that it installs called a uh, little command line file uh, library that's used for the command line, library for the command line called Ojo, um, that exports single letter functions for your command line enjoyment. Um, you know Perl, if you use dash M, means load this module, so now you can say Perl dash Mojo, which is kind of the, the whole point of calling it Ojo. Uh, in this first line, we create a web server that will serve you the time of day, and, and then we immediately invoke get on that, get slash, and so that would print the, the, the current time of day. In the second one, you read it uh, kind of backward, so we're going to load the Mojo object. We are passing in goodnight.json as our command line, first command line argument. F is a Mojo file object, and so we're going to shift in goodnight.json. Now we have a Mojo file object. Um, we're then invoking slurp on the Mojo file object, which returns the contents of that. So now we have this, the string that's inside goodnight.json. J is Mojo JSON object, and that takes a string and returns a Perl data structure, or it takes a Perl data structure and returns a JSON string. Whatever you give it, it does the opposite. Um, that gets passed to R, which is a data dumper, uh, which is dumper, data dumper dumper method. So what, we're, what we have here in this one line is a JSON to Perl converter, a data structure that's then pretty prints it. So not use, I mean, it's cute, but it's just, it's just for fun. This is fun stuff. OK, now we get to um, uh, more compositional stuff. Uh, this is Mojalicious Lite. Mojalicious Lite is, um, is the Mojalicious web framework, uh, but you can stuff everything into one file, and it just uh, fits nicely in there. Uh, we define here. Uh, this syntax usually throws a lot of people off. It doesn't look like Perl. It looks a lot more like Ruby. Um, we're going to define a, what happens when you create a Mojalicious Lite? When you say use Mojalicious Lite, uh, you, you import some methods. One of those is get, one of those is post, put, delete. And, and those are pre-declared so that you don't need parentheses, and so that you can get this kind of uh, clean parentheseless syntax. Um, it then, when you run app start at the bottom there, it then goes into an event loop, just like Apache does, waiting for web requests. So it listens on port 3000 by default. You can change that to any port you like. And uh, so here, we define a route slash. So when somebody hits slash, we run a callback. And um, C is, stands for controller, as in model view controller. So the controller runs once somebody's hit slash. We pull in that controller object. We then, stash is, a, is kind of a place that uh, we, we can save variables away for later that the template can read from. So we're going to set the title to all the things. And then we're going to render the template index. That template index, um, oh, there's title, is used in the, in the template down below. Um, then we create our template, uh, which is defined down here. Thanks is used down here in the template. And index is this whole chunk right here. So this is defined inline. This is one file. And Mojalicious knows to read itself in the data um, down below. You, there's a, there's a, a method that will take a Mojalicious Lite application. You can say on the command line, mojo inflate, I believe, and give it your application name. And it will explode it out into all of the parts as if it were a full Mojalicious application. So you can start small and grow and not be worried about, oh, I'm going to have to port this to a full Mojo app, because it will port it for you. Uh, and the renderer is responsible for taking template content and spitting out the HTML response to the user agent. So let's, uh, let's just quickly try this one. 14, oops, I'm going to go to 15. I uh, can't make sure this is the same one. Yes, it is. Example. Oh, so I've got to run daemon here. Okay, so there's, uh, here's our uh, web server it's running. It's listening on port 3000. I'm going to curl uh, localhost 3000 on slash. And there it is, uh, all the things. Welcome all the things. Thank you. Good job. Uh, that's our, and, and you can see here's some mojo log entries here that go to standard error by default. So this is, a, this is the template that we just rendered here with uh, 
two different ways of getting stuff into the template. You can set it in the stash. Anything that's passed in after, uh, during render is also added to the stash. So those two different ways. There's another interesting usage of Modulicious Lite. It has a JSON renderer built in, so you can you can only you can render templates, and you can also render JSON documents. This will um, take a Perl reference, uh, just a Perl data structure, and will return a, a stringified JSON object suitable for sending over the network. It also sets the content type automatically to application JSON. Sixteen, cat, yep, same one uh, example. Oh, I got our. Demon. Demon. Yep. And uh, then we're going to hit that again. Boom. And now we've got a, let me just, um, JSON PP. Yeah, so then we get a little JSON object back with the current time and the current weather that I just made up. Um, and that is Modulicious Light. Mm -hmm. oh. Modulicious Validator is also kind of new. Um, Modulicious has a validation class that allows you to add rules and check inputs of a form. And so um, OpenAPI, for example, uh, the Modulicious plugin for OpenAPI takes advantage of this framework and um, adds its own JSON schema-based validation. This is uh, interesting. So we create, uh, this is a Modulicious Lite application. I'm going to ask you to make your eyes skip over this first little chunk here, add check. We're going to go right down into, we've created a new route called post slash sign up. This is our controller. We create a validator object. We uh, say that there must be a field called name, and its size must be between 1 and 10, and it must match the pattern of lowercase letters. It must begin with a, a lowercase letter. We also require state, and it must be one of these. So in is a function that, that uses set comparison. Um, and we also ask for an age. Now, we use, invoke a method called range here. What's interesting about this is that um, range is not part of the built-in validation methods. We define it right here. So you can extend the validation syntax at runtime by adding new kinds of validation. You could get this as complex or fancy as you want. Uh, you could you know, validate entire data structures that might be passed in using JSON, and that's that's what open APIs, the open API plugin for Modulus just does here. So here we just check to, we get a max and a min, and we make sure that the value of, of, the, of the field that we're checking is between that range. If, the, uh, if any of those things fail, if validator has error, we're going to render a 400 and, and let them know what happened. Otherwise, we, we set, uh, uh, give a nice welcome message here. So let's, uh, let's see. Nope. 17, make sure this is the right one, it is. Uh, we're gonna run this as a daemon. Okay, and we're going to do a curl post uh, localhost 3000 sign up. And we're gonna pass in uh, some URL escaped. We want a name, we'll, we'll call that uh, Joe, and uh, what else do we need, an age is, uh, we'll say 20, and state is equal to California, and uh, city, that uh, city wasn't in my example, but we'll just say uh, Pasadena. And then we should get a welcome message saying, thank you very much, welcome Joe, there we go. Now, if we break something like that, we say capital Joe, we get an error, your fault. Now that came from, um, Right, right here this is the 400, and I've, I've got the 400 template down here, your fault, and we're using the Mojo template here to iterate over the, the pieces of the validation that failed and spit out each one. Let me start this up again, and uh, if we, that should fail again. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also fail the age check. I'm going to set that to 16, and we see that it gives us everything that's wrong. We don't have to keep asking what's wrong, at, you know, getting the user to guess what's wrong, you know, what, guess what I'm thinking. So that's, that's a nice thing. And you, you, now you absolutely could stop on the first error and return that, but um, by default it will just collect all the errors for you. Uh, very, very fancy and powerful stuff. 
Mojo Server Daemon. Uh, one of the core pieces that makes Mojolicious so amazing is its non-blocking server class. Here, we create a new daemon that will listen on port uh, 8080. Uh, we then, I'm going to ask you to skip that top part again. Um, we then add a request event handler. So on is the method we use for uh, on this event when this thing happens. So uh, request is something built into Mojolicious. There's um, response, request, there's a, there's a handful of, of events that happen inside and you can add handlers at each stage of those. And our little handler here corresponds with this handler up here which is a subroutine. So when we receive a request we're going to invoke this subroutine and Mojo Server Daemon passes to that subroutine the, um, the daemon object itself and also a transaction. It creates a transaction knows how to do that. And um, in that transaction we're going to uh, create a response code of 200. We're going to add some response headers, content type. This is just a reflection um, response here. We're going to look at the request and pick those headers out for its content type and just send those back to the user. Uh, we're going to look at the request body and send that back as the response body as well. And then we resume the transaction. We start the daemon here and that, that basically turns it on to be listening and then we run I loop start, which starts the event loop. Again, you wouldn't do that in a, you know, where you might already have an event loop running. Let's uh, try this one. 18. Uh, let's see. Yes, here it is. Exam. And I don't need to run daemon or anything because I'm, this is, I'm creating the daemon here. Um, so I have, oh, I've done a little bit, something a little bit more fancy than in my example. I'm creating six daemons and putting them in a list here from ports 8080 to 8085. And so I create a new daemon here and they all use the same request handler. And then I, I just push all the daemons into this thing here so that they survive the scope of the loop. Um, and then run start. So I'm, I'm actually, this is basically Apache pre-fork right here. I'm listening on all six ports. Um, we can, um, I'm going to benchmark this. I've got this little payload right here, and I'm going to uh, run Apache Bench against uh, the daemon listening on 8080. We're going to uh, use Apache Bench. We're going to start 150 connections. We're going to run this for 10 seconds. We're setting our content type to application JSON, and we're going to read our payload from payload.json. Here we go. 10 seconds underway. Um, you can see if I flip over here, uh, we're pounding it pretty good. It's handling it just fine. Um, let's see how well we did today. 330 requests per second. That's okay. I've, I've seen um, uh, on, uh, this is again a 2014 laptop. I've gotten just under 600 requests per second typically for a single threaded daemon, you know, written in a dynamic language. That's not, not too bad. Um, certainly, certainly not high performance, but again, we've got six of these now, and if, you know, if I could I could hit more of those. It's, it's uh, you know with pre forks and things like that. It's nice, especially for for most traffic that you would receive on a you know you wouldn't run Amazon.com on that, but you could definitely run uh, run almost any anything anything else. Uh, Modulus just has a non-blocking WebSocket library built into it, allowing you to handle thousands of concurrent WebSocket requests. Uh, here we're going to. This is the. Um, this is a route in Mojalicious Lite, so we're, instead of get or post, we say WebSocket and slash echo. When, when somebody does a WebSocket request to slash echo, we're going to invoke this where we grab their connection, we're going to yell to the entire room, so-and-so has joined. Um, anytime we receive some text, again, here's the on event handler. Anytime we receive text as a web uh, socket, we're going to um, broadcast that message back out to everyone who has joined this uh, particular connection. Um, if uh, you have libEV installed, um, which is an event library, it gives you C-like performance very fast. So let's go to 19 WebSockets. Um, make IP. So uh, go, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, if you have your laptop, Go to this uh, URL here, this uh, 104.236.124.232, and let me uh, make start, make make run. Port 80? Port 8080. 
important thing. <coughs> so here we are. This is, um, oh, looks like somebody's hitting it. I am, um, this, is a, this is running on uh, DigitalOcean so that you can, all, you can all hit it. We can all hit it together. Uh, let me, uh, oops. Ah, before that goes off the screen, let me grab that. OK. 8080. OK. So yeah, now we have an anonymous chat room built in about uh, you know 10 lines of Perl. So it's cool. All right, closed. So um, that is WebSockets. <laughs> Test Mojo. Ah, yes. Test Mojo is a, a, adds a Mojo user agent object and extends Test More with typical HTTP and WebSocket assertions like uh, status is, uh, get OK, text like. Um, this makes mechanization of testing web resources very simple mm -hmm. um, and, and, and really nice to use. Uh, it wouldn't replace Selenium for like JavaScript kinds of things, but everything else, it's incredible. Yeah, it's really great. Here we're going to pick out, uh, we're going to hit uh, the mojalicious.org. We're going to make sure that we have a network connection. That's all that get tests, get OK tests. It doesn't check the quality of the response, just that we could get there. And, and we're going to hit Twilio's API. Um, we check the status to make sure it was 200 on both of those. On the mojalicious, because it's in HTML, we're going to use DOM. Uh, CSS syntax and pick out to make sure that the word we're looking for was in that response. On the JSON side, we're going to use the JSON pointer syntax and pick out to make sure that the you know this this string exists at that point. Um, I'm not going to run this in the interest of time, but uh, this is a uh, this is very nice to use. Uh, a good chunk of Mojalicious behavior is defined internally using plugins. This makes Mojalicious a true framework. Um, easy to extend with a clear plugin API. Mojalicious will even help you write a new plugin with the Mojo plugin command line uh, utility. Uh, so here we create a plugin that creates a little helper called toInteger. And uh, it converts a hash of integers. It, it's, its functionality isn't really important to this. Uh, sometimes <coughs> when you, 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 you get JSON documents that have, the, the, the integers have strings around them, right? Quotes around them. And you're like, ah, you know, you got to add plus zero to those and make turn them back into integers before Perl serializes them correctly. This does that for us. So um, that's our, our plugin. Here is how we use the plugin. So over on the right is my um, Mojalicious Lite application. All I have to say is plugin typecast. Typecast, as you see over on the left, is, was the name of my plugin. Uh, then I have that now available to me in my controller as a native method. We just extended the syntax of Mojalicious again. Uh, we now have a two integer method that I can take my JSON response that has the stupid stringified integers, and for these keys, foo and bar, I'm going to turn them back into integers, just like this. So we can actually run this one, 21. So uh, here I just have my typecast sitting right there. Um, Oh, what's that? Okay, that's how I'm going to hit it. So let me start this up. Uh, we'll start that listening on port 3000. 21. All right, I'll just. So here's our JSON document. You can see that the foo is a string integer and bar is a string integer, and so is baz. But we're only we're only wanting to um, cat. We're only going to fix foo and bar because that's what we've said for our plugin. So, um, oops. Oh, there. That's back. So now we have bar and foo, which got their string integers turned back into real integers, and baz was untouched because we told it not to touch it. So that is that is a whoops, that is a plugin. Uh, there's some other odds and ends. UTF-8 support is transparent and just works, including inside of URLs. Um, it just, it, it uh, handles puny code perfectly. Uh, Mojalicious integrates with IOSocket SSL, so if you have that installed, TLS is completely transparent. No special work that needs to be done. Server name indication, this is a new thing on the internet in the last couple years, and Mojalicious supports it, allows you to serve multiple host names and TLS certificates over a single IP address, something that we don't do well, in, at least in many of our platforms. Um, 
Mojilicious today is the same size as it was in 2011. And it has added tons of functionality and features and things like that. Um, That's great. It's amazing. Yeah, their documentation grows. So if I, I, I extracted the, the pod files, basically. But all of the other modules, including those modules documentation, is still under uh, one and a half megs. And it, it hit that at, at, in 2011. And it occasionally dips and rises and dips and rises, but it doesn't. I mean, they just get better and better and better. Uh, Mojilicious has 95% test coverage with over 11,000 tests. Um, there are no patches accepted in Mojilicious without thorough tests that exercise everything that this patch is trying to fix. Um, I have a story about that if we have time at the end. Uh, the toolkit I've talked about today is what really makes Mojilicious a joy to work in. Um, everything is designed to work together, as you've seen. A lot of the things compose very nicely and are meant to, to, to work very cleanly and give you um, all the glue is in, inside it, and uh, you don't have to, to add a lot of, uh, there's no adapters you have to add to make things work. Uh, community support is excellent, and the documentation <laughs> is, is among the best I've ever seen. Um, these slides that I've been showing you are available at this URL here. I'll send this, a link to this out later. Um, the code is available here on GitHub, and there's a 2017 recording of, um, this has been uh, adjusted for some of the newer Modulicious today. What I've shown you has a few more things. Uh, last year had a few less things, obviously, but um, it's, it's pretty close to this. Didn't have, pro Promises was added uh, last summer, so that was not in the 2017. Uh, are there any other questions at this point? Okay, I have some bonus DVD material we can run through really quick. Um, Minion is not part of the Mojilicious framework, but it is a sister project and uses a lot of the Mojilicious toolkit to get its work done. It's a job queue for uh, real-time web. Uh, you can read through some of this. Um, I'm not gonna go through it. Um, it's amazing, though. So if you have work that needs to be done and it's kind of slow work, like maybe um, you know, setting up uh, uh, fulfilling product orders or anything that you have to talk to a, a slow website. And you don't want the customer to wait. We usually just put a job in a queue, right? This is that job queue. This does all that work nicely for you. Um, here is uh, what a queue looks like. There's two parts to it. There's a worker and a queue. And this is the queue side. So uh, this is, again, a Mojilicious light application. We uh, define here a um, where we want our storage. It supports out-of-the-box SQLite, Postgres, a few others, and there are other plugins if you want to use some other storage mechanism. Uh, the Postgres one is the default, and it's, it's really nice. So we have just defined our storage. Uh, we are now setting up a jobs route that we can post to. Uh, what we're going to do here is enqueue a new task called restart server. Now, we don't define that task. That's, a, that's, a, that's defined elsewhere. The workers know how to do that. So as long as we know what the name of that task is, and we're going to call it restart server here. Uh, we just pass in some configuration, like maybe the name of the server or something like that. Uh, and then we're going to return, hey, thank you, we got your job. It's handled because we've enqueued it right here. So this is our, this is our web application. We're just going to stand this up, and it's going to um, uh, run for us. Here is the worker. This is also a Mojilicious Lite, but this doesn't have a, a actually a Mojilicious Lite interface. It, it, uh, we'll start it, and I'll show you how it's started a little bit differently. Uh, here is where we define the restart server task that we added earlier in the other one. What it does is it, um, it's a subroutine, and it takes the job and the server name, which would, would have been passed into us. This little thing right here is, again, a, a, an event on the finished event, when a job finishes, uh, we, do we just add something to a log that it finished? We could also you know, go hit some other URL and say this finished and you know, tell the customer, send an email, do something like that, right? Um, so that's, that's, we add the event handler. Uh, here's the actual work that gets done. Uh, we're going to hit, um, we could pretend that this is the server that we need to restart and we actually SSH here. And maybe it exposes a, a, a URL here like this. And, and we hit it, and then we can, uh, when the job comes back, we either finish or fail, and, and those are the two dis different states that we can hit. Um, I think we don't have time for the demo of this, but uh, the code is available for you to try out. <laughs>